Postscriptum is a tactical first-person shooter set during the height of the Second World War. Much like live combat, the game demands competence and communication to survive and thrive. If you were looking to learn the basics or sharpen your skills, you have come to the right place. This is part six of a multi-part tutorial series covering every class in the game. Welcome to a Boron's Guide. Let's talk about a soldier with some explosive capabilities, the Grenadier. You'll be dropped into combat, loaded to the brim with state-of-the-art impact grenades for sending Jerry to an early grave. The Grenadier is yet another way to overthrow the Nazi menace. Good luck, and don't drop your ordnance. <clears throat> Pardon me. As you probably guessed, we'll be discussing the Grenadier class. The Grenadier specialization is a variant of the Rifleman, except you are armed to the teeth with explosives. With all of this explosive potential, a Grenadier is capable of dealing with threats on the battlefield better than most others. In this video, we will review the equipment, responsibilities, and some tips and tricks to playing the Grenadier class in Postscriptum. Let's first review the equipment you have at your disposal and how it is best implemented. Both Allied and German Grenadiers are equipped with essentially the same loadout, which are a bolt action or semi-automatic rifle with 7 to 12 magazines in reserve, an important part of a balanced breakfast. A knife for dealing with pesky, close-range enemies. Three to four rifle-mounted fragmentation grenades, an ordnance delivery system that explodes on impact. Two rifle-mounted smoke grenades, which fire a capsule of white phosphorus further than an arm can throw. Only American grenadiers are equipped with these special smoke cartridges. Three medical field dressings for healing up to 75% of your health or patching up an injured teammate. And one morphine syringe for reviving fallen comrades or the medic who is just about done getting killed in the same spot. An entrenching tool, perfect for building cover or weaponry on the battlefield. And a canteen with seven sips to recharge your stamina. As stated in other guides, zooming in during ADS is impossible without stamina, making your accurately placed boom boom grenades a bit more of a roll of the dice at longer ranges. Each faction arms their grenadier with different primary weapons. The American Grenadier heads to war with the M1 Garand, the rifle that won the war. While the British Grenadier enters the battlefield with the Lee Enfield bolt action rifle. The French Grenadier sets up with the Moss 36 bolt action rifle. And the German Grenadier is issued the Car 98. As stated in the previous tutorials, each of these weapons have their pros and cons, and take some time to get accustomed to. If you want some extra practice with these weapons, be sure to try out the training mode, where you can test out all of the firearms, vehicles, and mechanics of the game. Now that we've reviewed their equipment, it's time to discuss the roles and responsibilities of the Grenadier class. A rifle-mounted grenade well, is one of the most head. convenient weapons on the battlefield. Each squad is allowed a grenadier or an anti-tank trooper, but not simultaneously. Therefore, you must choose which class your team needs. As a grenadier, your main focus is on enemy personnel. Each faction's grenadier oh, can launch a fragmentation grenade for devastating results. 
Impact grenades are super effective against enemy positions or rallies, typically repainting the ground or nearby wall with blood at the same time. It won't touch armored vehicles, so it is best to avoid tanks altogether. However, some grenadier classes are armed with anti-tank grenades. These are your best offense against an enemy armored unit. Another great way to support your squad as the grenadier is through deploying your rifle-mounted smoke grenades. You can launch a smoke much further than your teammate can throw it. So aim on the far end of a field or bridge when masking your movements. The Grenadier can have different roles depending on the game mode or side you find yourself on. When attacking objectives, the Grenadier has a distinct advantage over traditional troopers when implementing their rifle-mounted frags. If aimed correctly, it can clear a room or bunker with a single pop. However, missing your target can have harrowing yeah, results, raining white-hot metal down on your allies or yourself. Benjamin, you As a defender, the Grenadier is really flexible. Used for hit-and-run tactics initially, the Grenadier is the ideal unit when repulsing a push. If a squad leader or logistics member can build an ammo box nearby, the Grenadier can effectively spam their grenade launcher to keep the enemy at a distance, especially when atop the high ground. They're to the uh, east crossroads. Those were the basic responsibilities of playing the Grenadier. Let's look at some tips and tricks that will enhance your experience in Postscriptum. Tactical realism is a major focus for Postscriptum. The weapons of the era play a big part in success or death on the battlefield. However, allied and Axis weaponry is not all created equal. Weapon balancing, that is the thought that all weapons in the game are symmetrical, is pushed aside for realism. In short, different weapons excel in different situations. The French Labelle and Moss 36 bolt-action rifles have significantly bulky iron sights, affecting the weapon's target acquisition. At range, the German Car 98K is significantly more effective than the American M1 Garand, or the weapon that won the war. But the semi-automatic Garand excels at closer ranges. Most submachine guns can devastate in close quarters combat, but struggle to hit targets at range. Remember to keep these limitations in mind when playing Postscriptum. Now that we've covered the equipment, responsibilities, and tips and tricks of the Grenadier class, it's time to wrap up with some final thoughts. With 10 different infantry classes to choose from, Many players can be overwhelmed with the roles and responsibilities in Postscriptum, but if you're looking to learn the basics or sharpen your skills with another class, be sure to check out the other parts of our multi-part Postscriptum guide. If you'd like to join us for a game sometime, you can find the link to our Discord server in the description below. On behalf of myself and all of the people involved in this video from the Moron Militia, we thank you for watching and hope to see you again sometime soon. And remember to always drink from your canteen.